Hi there, this is Ajit Navlaka, co-founder of Evercoach. And uh, I get this question a lot of times. It, is, it says, how do I sell X? Or how do you sell anything, right? Uh, and this question is so simple, but it's so important because in this world that we live in, we have to either position ourselves, we have to position our work, we have to position our products. Uh, and so we have to be selling all the time. A few years ago, when I, when I was still young and like kind of figuring everything out, and this was my early years in the business, I studied hours and hours and hours of materials, but I couldn't get to really sell as effectively as I can today. And that fundamental change came when I discovered this very simple but profound way of looking at sales. All right? So the first step to selling anything is, is in our minds. It's mostly where you could actually convince yourself or be able to have that conversation with yourself uh, on how or why you are actually doing what you're doing. So the first question and the first step to selling anything is to answer your why. As a salesperson, as an entrepreneur, as a coach, as a business owner, is first to know why you do what you do. Because what, what happens is once you've answered that question, the foundation of everything that we're going to talk about later in this video becomes really solid. Because you're not coming from a place of saying, oh, I need to sell this stuff. Because that's not the idea. The idea is not to sell something to somebody. The idea is to empower somebody to get a particular result. It, it's to help somebody in many ways to be able to get what they desire, to get them out of the place of their problem or the pain that they might be in, right? Or, or a desire that they might have. So you're helping them fulfill that desire. So the moment you can switch and actually answer that why for your product, for yourself, you will become dramatically good at, at sales or, and you will be able to sell anything. So for example, let's say if you were selling a phone, why are you selling that phone? What is the answer? What is the result? What's the outcome? What is it that the person who will buy that phone uh, will actually experience? Will it be a good experience? Will it be a bad experience? Will it fulfill a need? I know it sounds absurd as an example, but think about it like this. That's how the iPhone was created. That's how any other, even the cheap phones are created, right? The why behind those phones are very straightforward. For iPhone, it was to create that experience and communication because everybody was communicating, but the experience wasn't there, right? For a cheap phone, it's to create affordability and to be able to have everybody be able to communicate, right? It's powerful to know what's your why because once you know it, you can create your story around that. You can create your marketing around that. You can create your sales around that. So it's very important that you know what's the reason why you need to sell or you want to sell what you want to sell, right? Once you've answered the why, the second question that we need to answer is who. Who are we selling to? So when, when we create a marketing plan, when we try to figure out uh, and take that message to the market, if we have a great understanding of who we are communicating with, who we are actually selling to, it empowers our communication. Let me explain how. So think about it like this. If you are creating marketing for a 40-year-old versus you're creating marketing for a 20-year-old, the marketing and the language completely changes. It becomes completely different to how it would be to either of these individuals. It would further become different if, let's say, you're communicating to male audience or female audience. It will further change if you're communicating to a Texas audience or a California audience. It will further change if they are people with jobs or people with not jobs. It will further change if they have businesses. It will further change if their income bracket is different. So the more details you know of who you are communicating to, it empowers your marketing furthermore. Now, people ask me a lot of times, okay, but how do I know who am I selling to or how do I know my why? There's a very simple process of doing that. It is called asking questions, all right? It's very simple. The audience that you may think that you want to communicate to, ask them simple questions like, would you like something like this? What, would, do you have this problem, all right? And if you already have an audience, then just survey that audience. Just ask them simple questions like, what's your age? Where do you live, right? So you will know the exact demographic that you need to cater to or you are catering to already and that will allow your marketing to elevate to the next level. Most of the times I've seen entrepreneurs miss out on the why and the who and they get straight into the tactical stuff. They go to a copywriter, look at their template and say, I'll just copy that. Or they take somebody's email and they swipe it. Or they go and they follow a script. 
They don't understand why that script is designed the way it's designed. They don't understand why that sales page is in a particular flow or a webinar flow is in a particular flow. There's always a reason why, and that why, once understood, elevates your marketing to the next level. Now, let's get into some real stuff, okay? Once you've answered your why, once you've answered who you're catering to, here is the three-step, very simple three-step process that'll allow you to create a sales process for anything from here on, okay? So this is how you sell anything, okay? So imagine your client to be here, okay? And they want to get to here. Let's just call it the enlightened that person or whatever, the, the, the successful person, okay? And they need to make this journey from going from a place where they are to, the going, to going to the place where they need to be. Now, a lot of times people think that the place they are is miserable and the place they want to go is uh, successful. Uh, but that's not always the case. Uh, if you know anything about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you would understand that, especially in a little bit more wealthy countries, uh, people don't have the same desires that they had a few years ago, a few decades ago, right? There's no scarcity of food, per se. There's no scarcity of shelter, per se, right? And your audience, most likely, is not the ones looking for food and shelter. They're in more the higher side of the Maslow's pyramid. They're looking for more spirituality, self-actualization. They're looking for more higher needs. They're looking for significance. They're looking for attention of their friends and family, love. Uh, they're looking for much more softer aspects. They're looking for more validation, uh, which is why so many reality shows start popping in all the time, right? They're looking for all those things. So when you're working with your clients, don't always go to a place of saying, okay, they must be looking for blah, which is, let's say, making more money. It's not necessarily always about making more money. It's more about sometimes getting more significance, getting more value, getting more love, because that's how it translates in their head. They superficially say it's about the money, but it's not usually about that. Right? So, so you got to understand that as psychology and always know that this is why you need to know your who, right? So if your who is not at a place of the bottom of the pyramid, you need to work with them in a way that they understand that you're working with them on their higher needs, okay? But no conversation starts straight away here, right? Because that's their end goal. They don't even know sometimes that that's their end goal. They just are looking for whatever they think will help them get to their end goal. So they're looking for validation, they go for money because they go, if I'm rich, I will validate myself to be successful. You know, stuff like that. So you gotta be mindful of that because that's not their real need, which means, yes, you can satisfy the money need immediately, but they will never connect to your brand as deeply and they'll probably also not get you as much sales because everybody's trying to get them to make more money, right? Everybody's saying, here is how you make more, how, how you make more, where else if you go in and say, here's how you make more, but here is what your real outcome is, and they can see that you are that person for them, they would probably walk the journey with you much easily and more profoundly, okay? So let me walk you through how it really happens, okay? So the first step, or the first step of any sales process is to identify the pain or the problem. So this is where you can ask questions, or you ask questions to be able to find What's the place and what's the pain that the person is at, okay? So you could ask questions like, uh, if let's say you were in the market of where you are selling insurance or you are selling uh, phones, for example. So let's say you are a coach, okay? And you are working with an audience which is more towards abundance, all right? So the questions you may ask is, uh, were you happy with your income last year? Or you might ask questions like, uh, I, I guess you're making more than six figures, but is that the goal that you wanna be at? Okay, so you're trying to identify what's the place they're at and you're trying to get them to say where they're at. Let's actually take away the word trying. You are getting them to say where they're at. You want to make sure that they identify the pain or the problem that they are in. So once they identify that, we can walk them to the next step, which is the place of possibility. Possibility is where your clients understand that there is a possibility of them achieving what they want to achieve. Remember, like I said previously in the video, we are not, we are only identifying pain and problem because that's the place they're at. That's easy to understand for your clients and to be able to relate and say yes for the first time. But as soon as they've done that, you want to help them take the next step and see that there is a possibility that this pain will not be there for that matter, that result will actually be there, which is the last step, which is pleasure 
or a result that they aspire to. Okay? All these three steps can be achieved by questions that you ask your clients. You could almost any sales process is, is not about you telling somebody what they should be doing. It's mostly about you asking what they want and resonating with that answer and saying how your product helps that to answer that particular question. If the pain is hunger, if the pain is uh, say, I already make a lot of money, but I want more freedom, then, then you go and go, okay, so that's the pain. You identify that the person wants more freedom, and then you say there's a possibility of having that freedom in your life. And you establish that possibility by asking, do you know this case study of X? Do you know the case study of Y? Sharing that information with them, letting them know that there is a possibility, there's a chance that with whatever problem that they have, whatever pain they have, they can actually get the result. They can actually feel that they can walk that journey. And once you have taken them and shown them the possibility through case studies, social proof, through, through storytelling, the next step is actually having them experience a little bit of that pleasure or, or that result. And that also happens once your product is actually in their hands, but before even you give that product, you need to help them get like a little feeling of that pleasure, of that result that they could possibly get. Let me give you an example in if you were doing a webinar, right? So webinars are a very, very, very known format of creating more clients. What you would do is say you would have a page where they can register for the webinar, which simply addresses, or, or you could have a survey page uh, where it simply asks questions around the main topic of your webinar. Say for the case of this video, let's just say it is becoming a better coach, right? So you would go simply say, hey, join this webinar or join this online training where I will show you how to create a six-figure coaching business. Now you're addressing a direct pain of the audience that you're speaking to, okay? Or you could do a survey where it goes simply saying, answer these five questions, uh, and after those questions, we'll customize a report for you, which will give you the exact steps that you need to take in your coaching business to take it from five figures to six figures, okay? Again, a very direct pain or problem that you're addressing. But what do they truly desire? If you, if you are a coach, if you, or you've worked with coaches ever, you would know that their greatest desire is usually to get freedom. They want to get more time, not just be super busy. That's why they become coaches, so they can get that time and do what they love in the time that they even spend on actually coaching somebody else. So what happens is once they sign up, what you do is you send them a series of videos that shows them how they could have the lifestyle that they always desired, but now you're coming from a place of freedom. You're not necessarily talking about how to do six-figure business, because doing the six-figure business is the easy part. The harder part is creating that freedom, and that's what their true desire is as well. It's not the superficial desire that they say they want to do. The true desire is to have that income, but more importantly, have that freedom and have that income support the freedom, right? So you show that possibility through your case studies. You show that possibility through the results of your clients that they may, might have achieved. And lastly, on the webinar, you give them the first five steps to take so they can see that result straight off the bat. They can already see how they're more free than they previously were, right? And because they've got that result with you, now it's easier to convince them to go ahead and take the action of trying your product. And if the product's gonna help them, they're gonna keep it, and you will get the result that you always promised to your coach. That is pretty much the design of selling anything. If you ask these questions, you will always be able to identify the pain and problem, you will be always be able to walk them to the possibility of the result that they can have and eventually give them the pleasure of the result that they always wanted, okay? So just to recap the whole video, the first thing that we need to answer to sell anything, well, almost anything, is, is to answer why we do what we do. Once we've answered that question, we go who we are doing it for, and then we walk them through the three-step process of pain, possibility, and pleasure. And that is how you can sell almost anything. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and subscribe to this channel and uh, I will look forward to seeing you again in one of the other fun videos which helps you be a better coach or be a better entrepreneur. Thank you. Adios amigos.